Having reviewed over a dozen CPUs this year, it's time to round up the best of 2019 with the first installment of our annual GN Awards show. In this series, we'll pick the best products for different categories like performance, overall quality, gaming, overclocking, and more. Our goal today is to help you parse the best CPUs in each category so that you can pick the right parts for PC build purchases, especially during Black Friday, Cyber Monday, and other holiday sales. At the end of this content, one of two companies will walk away with a GN Award crystal for its efforts this year. Our award crystals are 3D laser engraved glass cubes that feature a GN teardown logo, replete with Easter eggs like MOSFETs, inductors, VRMs, PCIe slots, fans, and even screws all in 3D. And either AMD or Intel will get one of those for 2019. Before that, this video is brought to you by us and the GN Store. Although the companies have to earn their awards to get them, you can buy your own GN teardown crystal at store.gamersnexus.net. We also recently restocked our Blueprint Heather True Royal t-shirts, Anniversary Edition Teal Logo cotton shirts, and the large mod mats are also in stock and shipping now. If you want to support our work over the past year, head to store.gamersnexus.net. And additionally, we're working with Eden Reforestation Projects through November to plant 10 trees for each item sold on the store. Click the link in the description below. So a reminder for this type of content, this is a roundup. It's a year-end roundup. It's a bit of a feel-good piece because we get to go through all of the highlights for the year, so that's fun. But data is not the focus. We are recapping things. We're going to pull charts sparingly and show you the most important ones, but it's not going to be all charts start to finish. We'll have a lot of B-roll in here too. If you want more data on any of these CPUs, you can check each CPU's individual review. They're all on YouTube for the whole year. And the most recent reviews will have the most up-to-date data from us. So that'd be things like the Threadripper 3 series, the AMD Ryzen 3 3950X is pretty new, and then the Intel i9-9900KS. Those are the reviews you should look at if you want the most up-to-date Windows versions, game versions, all that stuff in our testing methodology. So let's start it out. We'll go through all of the best for different categories, and then the last one will be the worst trend, the best worst trend. It's a good one this year. Our first award for the year is for best overall. This isn't just best overall value, but just for the best all-arounder, period. This year, the AMD Ryzen 5 3600 receives our GN Award Crystal for its $200 Zen 2 processor, succeeding our 2018 award for best overall value that was given to the AMD R5 2600. Although the R5 still receives an award here, the reasoning for its receipt has only been magnified with the eulogizing of Intel's Core i5 processors. Intel began cannibalizing its Core i5 line with its own products years ago, but AMD finished what it started in 2017. With 2018, AMD's R5 2600 killed off what remained of the Core i5 value proposition. In 2019, when the AMD R5 3600 launched, we're reminded of a scene from The Simpsons. <laughs> The R5 3600 ticks all the boxes that the R5 2600 did, but has greatly improved in its gaming performance and just in general. The delta between the Intel i5 CPUs and the AMD R5 CPUs has shrunken this year, with the maximum delta now typically around 13% benefit for Intel with the 9600K. But the thing is, the sacrifice in favor of this is too great to be worthwhile. Not only is the gaming benefit limited, as shown in some of our gaming charts, it's also transitory. In more games each year, we're noticing the cut down Core i5s exhibiting frame time variability that counteracts its fleeting performance superiority with unreliable stuttery behavior. The AMD R5 3600 is more reliable and consistent in its performance across all the games we tested, making it the better gaming option all around. Beyond even that, we've also illustrated that the R5 3600 is an extremely capable performer for hobbyist production or creation tasks on a budget. If you're a 3D modeler or animator and still prefer frame-by-frame -frame rendering to, say, Eevee, Blender fully leverages the 12 threads and positions the R5 3600 close to the R7 2700X and Intel i7 9700K. Further, it's a strong Adobe Premiere and live streaming performer offering an entry-level working person CPU. Although overclocking is still somewhat limited, the non-X version of the 3600 gives enough headroom to play around while being able to save some money versus the really not worthwhile X version. AMD has done exceptionally well with its R5 series pricing and positioning, and the R5 3600 takes the reins from the 2600 adeptly and unwaveringly. This easily wins the award for best overall CPU of 2019 with no hesitation at all in this choice. We've now arrived to one of two awards that Intel will be receiving for the year, and it's for best gaming CPU. There are a lot of caveats here, but at the end of the day, Intel's 9900K and 9900KS CPUs, 
the latter of which isn't particularly worth buying, remain chart toppers for CPU gaming performance. Ultimately, not many people need this level of performance, but for anyone dead set on pushing the highest possible frame rates or trying to saturate high refresh displays, the 9900K will be the most likely to meet those demands. It's a little boring, though, because this isn't a 2019 CPU. Technically, the 9900K S is, but that doesn't much count since it's literally a 9900K that's been binned. Anyway, the 9900K gets the award for best gaming CPU, as it's still able to chart top in every single title, only giving way occasionally to a 4.9 GHz all-core OC 10980XE. If you're not able to justify the 9900K in price, the 9700K has been competitive in the past, but we aren't as firm in our ability to recommend the part, given some recent difficulties in games like Red Dead Redemption 2. The 9900K retains our recommendation for hardcore, gaming-only builds that have a big budget, whereas we defer to the 3600 for more budget-limited builds. Our award for best small business and hobbyist production for this year will go to the AMD R9 3950X, which has earned the nickname Baby Threadripper from our viewers. This CPU has all the cores, clocks, and cache of a mini HEDT CPU, and it's even got a miniaturized version of HEDT pricing but remains on the mainstream desktop AM4 platform. This is a good thing, as the loss of PCIe lanes and quad channel isn't as important as the ability to keep costs, particularly motherboard costs, down for many HEDT buyers. Threadripper always exists in the upper echelon, but the 3950X has done a phenomenal job at pushing the Intel 18 core 10980XE into retirement at its launch. We think the 3950X is excessive for most people, as most things that cost $750 are, but we also think it's the perfect fit for small businesses or hobbyists with a bigger budget, but not quite a Threadripper budget. Specifically, those hobbyists or small businesses might be ones which focus on movie or video production. Wedding videographers, DJs, YouTubers, streamers, animators, 3D modelers, corporate training teams with multimedia needs, or other similar jobs. A lot of the budget-conscious businesses could reap the benefits of the 3950X without burning through the entire PC budget on just a CPU. Besides, from a security standpoint, the Zen architecture has proven at least to be somewhat more hardened than Intel's existing chips. It's not invulnerable, nothing is, but it's definitely doing better. We found the 3950X to be AMD's most competitively positioned CPU of the year, as it largely invalidated the 10980XE while also avoiding many of the single-thread performance traps that its previous high-core count CPUs encountered, like the 1950X. As an honorable mention, if you're a small business or a hobbyist on a tighter budget, consider the still-good R7 2700 that we recommended for this same category last year. At present, that CPU is under $180 on most retailers these days, it won't be in stock forever, and it's not new, but it is cheap, and it's every bit as good as it used to be. Our next award is for Best Budget Gaming CPU, and when we're looking for budget here, we really mean budget. Ultra budget. This one goes to the $50 Athlon 3000G. AMD's cheapest installment in the Athlon line in a while has recently arrived. Our Athlon 3000G review is fast approaching, but we already have the performance locked down. The Athlon 3000G isn't a strong performer but it fits in the good enough category when compared to its price point. We'd recommend this CPU for anyone who's trying to build a gaming PC for maybe under $500 or even $450 or less, although we wouldn't recommend using it for the integrated graphics processor. It's very weak. It's a nice bonus, but realistically, this CPU shines best when used in conjunction with a cheap, dedicated GPU for gaming workloads. That said, if you wanted a CPU for a non-gaming task, like a multimedia box just in the living room, then using the IGP might make sense here. Either way, you can expect performance as matched with a DGPU to fall just under the AMD R3 1200 or 1300X CPUs previously, so if you can find a 1300X for a similar price point and don't need the IGP, it might be a better option. For $50 though, the Athlon 3000G makes sense for an ultra-budget build for lighter weight games. It's also unlocked, like the Athlon 200GE accidentally was, making it a good overclocker that can actually gain a lot for performance if you put 10 or 15 minutes into a simple overclock. Keep in mind that this CPU won't do well with more threat-intensive games like Assassin's Creed or Total War. The experience will be bad in some games where you just don't have the threads to deal with them, but it'll work relative to its price fairly well on a lot of the esports titles. As a runner-up, we'd recommend the AMD 3200G APU. We tend to prefer cheap CPUs with a good cheap DGPU option over an APU, 
which integrates a low-end IGP into the same package, but the 3200G is a good option for space-constrained builds or budget builds where you may want a more powerful CPU to go with a DGPU upgrade later. The next award is for most fun to overclock. We're going to split this one between the AMD R9 3950X and Intel i9 9900KS. The 10980XE was fine, but sort of boring when compared to the more enthusiast-focused 7980XE. The Intel i9-9900KS is the more fun of the chips for non-extreme overclocking, as there's a lot of room for voltage tuning, particularly in the negative direction, to maximize the volt frequency curve. There's room to tweak uncore and core clocks alongside memory, and that room continues scaling into extreme overclocking and competitive overclocking endeavors, where we were able to, with relatively minimal skill, hit uh, just under 6 GHz. The 3950X also lands on this chart, but for a different reason. The Ryzen 3000 CPUs in general have potential to be a lot of fun or a lot of frustration, depending on what aspects of overclocking you're most interested in. For ambient overclocking without extreme cooling, you'll get the most gains from tuning the Infinity Fabric memory timings and memory sub timings, with a lot less to gain from a pure core overclock. We find this fun, but for people who don't have any interest in memory tweaking, you may want to just load XMP or, best case, maybe use Ryzen DRAM calculator and then move on. There's more to gain out of the Infinity Fabric overclocking than anything else, but that changes with exotic cooling. For extreme cooling, the 3950X turns into a lot more fun. We were blown away by how well ours in particular overclocked, but it makes sense. It's a better bin than the lower tier SKUs. We were able to hold about 5.2 to 5.3 gigahertz with liquid nitrogen, and it's a lot of fun to tune all the AMD OC options along the way. There's definitely a ton to learn with XOC on Ryzen 3000, like the fact that Infinity Fabric has to be cut to 1467 MHz once going below about minus 100 degrees Celsius, and we find this exploration process to be the most entertaining aspect for enthusiast overclockers, while the 9900K and KS just feel sort of standard. The next is for Best High-End Workstation CPU, an award we're assigning to the Threadripper 3970X with a runner-up spot given to the 3960X. This would traditionally be more contested between Intel and AMD HEDT parts, but release day wrought absolute havoc on Intel's 10980XE CPU. A lot of comments joked that Intel launched a CPU that was obsolete within six hours. But even that isn't accurate. It was obsolete immediately. Intel barely improved over its previous generation, and only really managed big gains when overclocked. The 10980XE is still a great overclocker, but stock to stock, it barely stands up to the 3950X, if at all, and often requires that 4.9 GHz all-core OC to match some of the AMD 3950X results and certainly the 3960X results. If you can't afford the threader for series, the 3950X makes perfect sense as a cheaper stand-in, but for those who can, the 3970X offers linear scaling and tile-based renderers that we tested and other thread-heavy applications, like decompression work. The 3970X blew past our 2990WX in our production workload charts. Again, 7-zip decompression is a great example, but also managed to prove itself as a capable gaming performer without major stuttering issues found on previous HEDT AMD parts. The threader for 3970X would be excellently deployed in a compression or decompression box, a blender machine, as in the software, not a literal blender, or anything else that needs high memory density, and would also do well for managing multiple streams from one box. If you're looking for a workhorse and have minimal gaming concern or secondary gaming concern, this CPU is the best choice in its price class, but it is expensive. We'll give an honorable mention to the 28-core 3175X. We enjoyed testing this one at the beginning of the year, and it did prove to be an exceptional performer that particularly well established itself in Adobe Premiere work, but the recent launches have made this CPU a lot harder to recommend. Next up is a special reward for GN viewers and for GN manufacturers. This award goes to Intel for the biggest disappointment of 2019 in the CPU category. The 10980XE wins this one last year. We awarded Intel's i9-9980XE with our biggest disappointment award for CPUs of the time. This year, Intel can be the proud recipient of its second consecutive biggest disappointment award for the sort of new 10,000 series, not quite 10th gen, 980XE. Aside from the tone-deaf nature of assigning a product name that's impossible to quickly say and easy to forget, Intel also assigned its product nearly the same specs and performance as the previous refresh, the 9980XE, which we thought was mostly worse than the 7980XE before it. The 7980XE is one of our favorite processors of all time, mostly because enthusiast opportunities for delitting, applying liquid metal, pushing hard overclocks were so plentiful. The 9980XE went to solder, and to Intel's credit, the community 
did think it wanted that, but this only really made it better for ExoSeers. Otherwise, it was a slightly faster refresh that lost a lot of the enthusiast potential. The biggest downside with the 10980XE is that it's actually slower in some instances, especially its name, saying it is very slow and annoying, than the 9980XE. The slowdowns here are because of the new in-silicon mitigations for some of the recent exploits. Intel didn't mitigate against all of the security vulnerabilities. Zombie Load 2.0 is still a concern, for instance, but it began the process for Meltdown Inspector. The chip is still vulnerable, though. Regarding the mitigations, I guess you could say that 60% of the time, they work every time. The 10980XE technically has a different architecture name, but you'd never know it's anything more than a frequency uptick if going by the charts. The 10980XE ties with the 9980XE in a lot of our benchmarks, or near enough that it's error, and it loses to the 3950X 16-core CPU, also $250 cheaper, in most of the charts. The 10980XE let us down in almost every way possible. We were hoping it'd revive some of our HEDT overclocking interests, and although it did hit 4.9 GHz all-core with liquid cooling, it's not really much different from the 7980XE of 2017 in the grand scheme of things. Even with the price reduction, Intel simply can't compete with this part. Finally, here's our last category, the worst trend, and it's for pointless product segmentation. We've praised AMD a lot in this video and Intel a little bit, but both deserve a smack for this category. Our last award goes to both AMD and Intel, who can celebrate jointly for receiving our award for the worst trend of pointless product segmentation. Both AMD and Intel are segmenting their products into oblivion. For AMD, that'd be the company's insistence to launch products like the 3600X, which is a 3600 with a very mild 200 megahertz pre-overclock, and a cooler that's worse than just buying a 3600 with an aftermarket solution for cheaper than the 3600X's combined cost. The 3700X and 3800X don't both need to exist either, as they serve minimal purpose other than to make people feel like they're somehow getting better value by paying a lot more money for what is functionally a sort of maybe bin to CPU with no overclocking headroom to begin with. Intel also does this, although it's less about segmentation and more about refreshing. The 10980XE is a re-refresh. The 9900KS is a direct refresh of the 9900K. It was a desperate attempt at pushing out some sort of product before end of year. It's hard to ding Intel specifically for pointless segmentation in 2019, seeing as the company has failed to launch actually new products in 2019. If we look at 2018, the so-called 9th gen, which most certainly isn't a new generation, mind you, had enough F, U, K, and N SKUs to confuse even the reviewers. I'll lose my fucking mind if there's another one. There's gonna be some missing syllables from that last one because we need to be advertiser friendly. So that's it for the roundup for best CPUs of 2019. Thank you for watching. We have a lot more of these roundups coming up. And if you want a recap of everything we've worked on for the last year compressed into a couple days worth of videos, then subscribe for all of that. You can go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly, and we've restocked a lot of the stuff there as well, and patreon.com slash gamersnexus as well if you'd like to help us that way. Thank you for watching. We'll see you all next time.